So if you're a little bit like me, you probably have a problem leaving any car you own left stock. Well, that can be a problem down the road because modifying your car can make it better or it can make it severely unreliable depending on which modifications you decide to do. And if you happen to have a vehicle that's still under some type of manufacturer warranty or you've spent the money on an extended warranty, those modifications sometimes, well, they can uh, cause a very bad day or a week, possibly a month, and who knows, could be a year depending on the situation. So this video is going over my personal experiences with car warranties and modifications and very expensive repairs and why there's actually a better way to protect your car without a warranty. So let's get into it. So when you go and purchase a car from a dealership, one of the very many things they're gonna try to sell you is an extended warranty. If it's a new car, they still wanna sell you that extended warranty. Now. If it is a car that you're planning to leave alone, sometimes it actually makes sense to buy the extended warranties. They usually will cover you through your loan term and it just makes sense at that point. But if you are the type of person who is planning to modify your car uh, when you buy it during warranty period, yeah, there's, there's definitely some gray area there. While warranties are great, not so much if you're gonna modify your car. Not to say that you can't have warranty repairs done on a modified car because yeah, it, you can. In fact, my 2014 Ford Taurus SHO was visibly modified. Even had a tune in it when I took it to the dealership. I had an aftermarket third-party warranty for that vehicle because I bought it used with 66,000 miles. And that warranty ended up paying out for uh, basically a, re a rebuilt transmission that's been resealed and a new uh, PTU for the all-wheel drive system and a couple other small things that were wrong with the car uh, as it got up in age. So all in all, that warranty that I paid, I think like $3,400 for, ended up covering over $10,000 worth of repairs. And then the only additional money I had to come up with was my deductible for each claim uh, which was only $200. It ended up saving me $7,000 in the long run on the repairs of that vehicle. So it was great. You can't always expect warranty companies to cover repairs on a vehicle that's been modified. If it's a third party warranty, you have a shot, but it doesn't stop you from jumping through all the hoops you gotta go through. You gotta go to the dealerships to have the service department look at it. It takes weeks, sometimes months to get an answer. All the while you're sitting there with your thumb up your butt trying to figure out what's going on and whether you're gonna be on the hook for the repair or not. Even though you have a chance, there's still a lot of games you have to play. And sometimes people just don't wanna play games. I know I don't like playing games, unless it's a video game. Even then, I don't play them as much as I used to. So it's even worse if you buy a new car, like the one I'm sitting in right now. I bought this car, for those who don't know, I bought this car, brand new, it's a 2020 Ford Mustang. I even purchased the extended Ford warranty for the vehicle, covering it all the way up to 100,000 miles through my loan term. I'm like, man, this thing is gonna be rock solid, no issues, we're good. I had plans to do very little modifications to the car just to get a little extra power and then, you know, some looks and maybe some suspension stuff, but never to get like too crazy. This was supposed to be a reliable daily driver that was replacing the unreliable SHO that kept needing repairs. And those repairs came after my, you know, extended warranty expired, of course. I was like, man, we're all good. Up until 48 thousand miles or 47 and change it was when the factory engine in this car experienced a sudden unknown catastrophic <laughs> failure still to this day i don't understand how and or why and the only thing i've been able to think of it was just a perfect storm with multiple influences to cause the problem all at the same time so it sucked here i am thinking 
you know, there ain't no reason that this car just suddenly took a crap. It was running perfectly fine the day before, the week, be you know, all the way up until just that one particular moment. So I took the vehicle to the dealership, not thinking anything of it. Yes, it had modifications on the car, not thinking anything of it. And lo and behold, wouldn't you know, my warranty claim for a blown engine was denied by Ford. Mind you, this was under Ford's original factory warranty for the vehicle, covered under the five-year, 60,000 powertrain warranty. Not through the Ford's extended warranty. The car sat at the dealership for two and a half months, going back and forth, fighting, trying to get this engine replaced under warranty, doing everything I can to prove that it was not a fault of the parts on the car and wasn't a fault of user error or anything, and it was something to do with the original parts caused the failure. However, I was unsuccessful. Even contacting uh, attorneys to fight the issue because the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act suggests that a manufacturer cannot deny a warranty claim due to aftermarket parts on a vehicle or if you do the work on your own vehicle. You have every right to use non-manufactured products on the vehicle and uh, to do the work yourself. Even though there is a federal law in place to protect consumers from manufacturers wrongly denying warranty claims, there's a caveat to that that I found out the hard way. See, I relied on that information to protect me if things went south. That was wrong because when things did go south, after contacting many different attorneys, I all got the same answer. We're not interested in taking your case. What I've learned is these attorneys, especially these big names you see, all you know, the ones that advertise all over the place, they are nothing but predatory lawyers. They're looking out for big payday lawsuits that have pretty much a guaranteed chance of winning. There's no guaranteed chance of winning a lawsuit over aftermarket parts on a factory vehicle against a manufacturer like Ford, unless the vehicle was completely stock and they still denied the warranty because the aftermarket parts, even though they're part of the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act, creates gray area, it lowers the chance of winning. Therefore, these attorneys, they don't want to fight for you. And it makes no sense to pay money out of your pocket for a lawyer, because if you lose, then you're on the hook for thousands of dollars of uh, court fees and attorney fees plus the thousands of dollars for the repair in the first place. So I've learned the hard way that you cannot rely on the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act to have your modified vehicle repaired under, um, you know, your factory warranty if it was wrongly denied. Not to say it doesn't happen, but once again, it is more hoops you got to jump through and you're, there's no guarantees. Not to mention, even if you were to go that route with a high chance of success of winning a case, Think about how long that takes. We're talking months to drag that whole process out, which means months you're out of a vehicle. So unless you have a way to fund a rental vehicle or you have a secondary vehicle, if that is your primary vehicle, man, you are SOL. Getting the work, man, I hope you have public transportation or something because it ain't happening. So even then, does it become a problem? What I have learned through my personal experiences with having successful warranty repairs with modified vehicles and unsuccessful warranty repairs on modified vehicles is that it makes more sense to self-warranty your vehicle than to spend the money on any warranty for that vehicle. What do I mean by self-warranting the vehicle? Meaning that instead of paying $3,000, for an aftermarket or third-party warranty or an extended warranty or whatever, you're simply taking that same money that you're gonna pay and putting it in a bank account somewhere, under a pillow, wherever. My suggestion is in a bank account that accrues interest. Now, I understand that when you purchase said warranties, they break that up over your loan period. Most people are financing cars for six years. 72 months is the most common uh, loan period for a vehicle. So yeah, you know, when you take $3,000, you break it over 72 months, and ain't such a big deal. 
But if you're smart about it and you're strategic about it, you can definitely put money aside each month for your uh, warranty fund. So let's say that you're out shopping for a car. You know that you can afford up to $500 a month car payment. So my advice is if your monthly budget is $500 for a car, then I would be looking for a car that gets you in the $400 a month payment range. That way, that additional money that you were able to spend, that extra $100, you can then put $100 aside each and every month into a interest accruing bank account. And at the end of the year, you're going to have over $1,200 to put towards any repairs that need to be made. The problem is, you know, any big ticket repair item, transmissions, engines, um, you know, even turbochargers on factory, forced induction vehicles, fuel system, any of those items can cost thousands and beyond. You know, typically an engine, five to 10,000, a transmission, Four to eight thousand, depending on the vehicle. You know, it's best to have at least ten thousand dollars sitting on the side for any repair, especially if it's a more newer vehicle where parts are definitely more expensive. And let's say it's a vehicle that has a more expensive powertrain in it. You definitely want to at least have ten thousand sitting to the side. And I know you're like, there ain't no way I'm gonna be able to save ten thousand to sit into the side. Yeah, well, you're probably not wrong. If you're just getting by on money, maybe you're you know you're young, you you ain't got the best job yet, but you still want your dream car. You want something that's gonna make you happy. You want to you know build something. I get it, man. I get it. I was there. But if you can play your cards right. You can have your cake and eat it too, right? So if you know you can spend certain amount of money for a car a month, allow more money. If you the, the most money you can put aside each month, the better. If you can put money aside at the initial purchase of the vehicle, like let's say you have $5,000 you were putting down on a vehicle. If you don't need to put $5,000 down, you can always put less money down towards the purchase of the vehicle and put the rest of that money aside um, in, in a bank account and then still make your monthly payments. And that way, once you get to that goal, that cap, whatever you reserve for repairs, you don't have to put any more in. It can just sit there and collect interest. If the time ever comes, you need to make any repairs, that money is there. That money is waiting ready to go like if you know crap i just sent number six piston or number eight piston you know to mars like you know it. stuff hit the fan you ain't gotta sit there and wait for some mechanic or a tech to look at it like you already know you need new engine block everything you just need that stuff on a truck ready to you there's your money it's right there <laughs> you know but all right need a new engine Let's see, where can I get a good engine? All right, this company has one ready to rock. Buy it now. Engine's on the way. And that way you can have your car fixed quick and it's easy. There's no hoops to jump through. The hardest part of self-warranting a vehicle is just allowing yourself to budget the money to even build the savings in the first place. You can even do the same thing for modifications. So, I mean, if you really wanted to be like all about this, put some money aside for mods and for repair and you're ready to roll. You ain't got to bankrupt yourself to have fun with your car. You know stuff can get fixed. Worst case scenario. If you don't have a car payment already, then it makes it even easier. You could put as much money aside a month that you could possibly make. And then before you know it, you have your repair fund. You have your modification fund. But I've learned that it makes so much more sense and, it, and in the long run, it protects you better because there's 100% guarantee that you will have your vehicle repaired if it is your money making that repair. If you're relying on someone else to give you that money for the repair, even though you've paid into it, good luck because there's not always that 100% chance they will agree to repair your modified vehicle. So with that, I hope you found this video a little bit helpful. 
And you probably were like, well, I already knew this. And maybe you didn't or even thought about it, but let me tell you, going forward, I will never worry about buying a vehicle for a warranty, i.e. a new vehicle, and I will never purchase an extended warranty because I am now going forward always going to self-warranty my vehicles because I know it will A, get fixed when it needs fixed, and I can fix it with the parts I choose and where I choose and how I choose with no hoops to jump through, no games to play, and that means less time the vehicle is off the road, less time I don't have to worry about missing for work and all kinds of other things, and it's just a better way of going about it in my opinion. But if you found this video helpful and if you liked it, please go ahead, give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for next Cars Creative video.